All right, welcome back everybody. This is Dave with Alum House. We are getting back into this video series on teaching sound technicians how to practice at home. So previously we brought in some tracks that were pre, uh, that were recorded live from our venue. We dragged and dropped those in. We've set gain structure. We've actually gone through and even set a channel strip with compression and EQ on each channel or each instrument in this case from top to bottom. And so what we want to do now, uh, when we left the last one, we had a little bit of concerns with, uh, with the vocals and their EQing. And so I want to spend a minute or two kind of playing around with that. Uh, but first, I want to take a look at the main output. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my mix window here in the bottom right. And that brings up all of our tracks with our faders, just like on a soundboard. And it brings up the main output here on the far right. Also, if I bring up the browse, it's going to pop up in a whole new section for us. And at the top, we can hit effects. And then here under personas, we have kind of the stock plugins that come with this free version of personas studio one. So what we want to do is grab our channel strip here. We can just click and drag it right into the insert part of our main output. And what we're going to do is hit play and we're going to kind of listen through and just maybe mess with EQ and maybe a little bit of compression. I'll hit slow on our compressor and just see what little changes we make, uh, how it affects this overall mix. I'm also going to turn off this adapt Q just so it doesn't hit such a broad band of frequencies. So here we go. I'm going to back this up and this is the same track we've been working on. Let's hit play. A little compression. Just seeing that red light blink a little bit. Taking out 1.5 dB, this is at 350 hertz. Turn this bypass. All right, so here's what I'm hearing. That, this frequency here, 350 hertz, uh, the bass guitar has some rumble in it, and I think the floor tom as well. So if I make this adjustment here, now it's also going to be taking that 350 out of everything. The guitars, the overheads on the drums, the vocals. So it's affecting everything. So what I might try and do is make those adjustments on the bass guitar and on the floor tom and see if I can just do it individually instead of affecting everything. Now, the compressor... The compressor really helped to kind of tighten things up. Um, on this main output in the top right corner up here, when the compressor is active, you'll see a little orange line happen. You'll actually see that on each channel when the compressor is in, engaged. But let's back it up and kind of see how that compressor is acting. I'm going to boost it up some. You see the orange over here just kind of peeking out some. You can see orange here on this bass. Even more on our acoustic guitar when the strums pretty hard. Right, so I'm gonna loosen this up. Alright, so just seeing how that interacts, uh, so you get a visual cue of where where the compression is and how much is happening. But I want to go ahead and close this channel strip. I want to come over here to our bass guitar. Take a peek. All right, good. Now we have no EQing happening here. So this is great. We actually know that we want to bring this down to about 350. We can actually click in here, type in 350. And I want to boost it. I want to increase the gain, the volume. And I want to turn off my Adapt Q. And let's hear what this sounds like. Just the bass guitar. I'm going to solo and hit play. 
Okay, so you hear that. If I bring that out, about three decibels. So that's that's bringing, it's it's removing some of the muddiness of this guitar. I really like the grit that the the um, pedal is offering us, but I want to remove some of that. I want to add in just a little bit more of the bottom end too. So I'm going to take this and bring it way up high up here, close to where we're cutting, and I'm going to boost it just by one and a half decibels and see what we get. Let's hit play. I'm going to bypass. So that's okay. We'll leave that like it is for right now. Let's close that. And we'll come down here to Tom 2 and take a look at Tom 2. Now Tom 2 already has some pretty aggressive cuts. You can see in that 300 and 400 hertz range. So we're at 450. It's a little higher. But I'm going to not mess with the floor Tom right now. I'm just going to listen to everything and see if that bass guitar cleans up what I was hearing. So let's go back here. We'll hit play. This is our main channel strip. Let's boost. All right. I think that's pretty good right now. We're going to leave that one alone. Let's go back to this male vocal. We'll bring up the channel strip. Let's see if we can add some more body back into this vocal. You can see these frequencies here from 500 down to 200. We have a lot that we've removed. And unfortunately, that's also the body of the voice. That's where the, the male vocal uh, is really resonant. So let's solo the male vocal by hitting our S on the male vocal. We will hit play and listen to the male Still vocal. Never alone. And it is pretty thin. He's alive in my bones. Let's Go take this EQ up. Sanctifies. Day by day by day. Day by day by day. Yeah, so you can hear that the drums come in and out. We're picking up a lot of drum sound. Even with a plexiglass shell in front of our kit, we're still getting a lot of bleed over into this vocal mic. So that's one thing we want to keep in mind is if we start to add reverbs and delays onto these vocals, we're going to get a little bit of that drum sound in those effects as well. So right now, instead of taking that, I'm going to put this back at zero, and I want to start to lower our, our low cut here and see if that gets us a different effect. Let's go back some and hit play. Still never alone. Let's lower this down, see what we hear. He's alive in my bones, the ghost of God. So that H, he, was really prominent. Sanctifies. Day by day by day, day by day by day, day by day by day. All right, so here's what I'm going to leave right now. And I want to, we never in a live scenario listen to the instrument soloed. We only hear the vocal with the band. We hear the band as a whole. We hear the, the worship team as a whole. So in this case, we're going to listen to the vocal in the mix. So let's unsolo and let's go back and let's listen to everything. Here we go. All right, I think what I'm getting now is that we've boosted, a, we've increased these top frequencies too low. So I want to actually use this frequency knob here and I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to head towards like 5,000 hertz. We're at 2.5 right now and hit play. Let's see. So this is kind of the, the, the shower concept that I call it. If you want the water in the shower to be warmer, you can do one of two things. You can either turn up the hot or you can turn down the cold. In this case, we wanted more of the, the middle frequencies in this vocal. And so instead of boosting those, uh, we've just kind of moved 
by having this down here, we were having we were increasing too much of this uh, this top end uh, in the 2,000 hertz range, and so it was actually it was actually overpowering the body of the vocal. So by pushing this up, um, excuse me, this was two decibels of boost. By pushing this up closer to almost 5,000 hertz, it got away uh, from overpowering that body, the body of the vocal, and I think it's much better. Let's listen to it one more time. All right, I'm going to live with this right here. So what I did is I boosted the mid-range. I increased that some. Uh, looks like two decibels here at about 500 hertz. That's, again, the resonant body of the, the vocal, which is completely opposite of what we've done in a previous video. I then tightened back up my low cut to take out a lot of this muddiness. And to me right now, the vocal sounds really good. It's a healthy male vocal. Uh, he already in his voice has a lot of top end overtones, which may or may not mean anything to you. Let's hit play one more time. Listen to the clarity up top. Now, one thing to point out, you saw me lower the compressor, and that's because as we've made these these uh, boosted these frequencies, it's now hitting the compressor more. And so I wanted to lower the compressor so that it's not uh, not sounding squashed. So here we go. Yeah. to this female vocal. He's alive in my bones, the ghost of God, sanctified. Day by day by day, day by day by day, day by day by day. Day by day by day, day by day. All right, so I'm pretty happy at this point with the vocals, with the band. I think it's an okay mix to start out with. We've added a little bit of compression on our main channel, on our main output, and we actually lowered, well, this looks like half a dB. Let me just hit zero, so we're actually not EQing the main outs at this point. Um, but that's kind of a decent scenario set up at this point. I want to come back in now and add some reverb. Uh, again, if we start to think like we're in the box, uh, we have no room sound. You're going to have some natural reverb or natural delays in your room because of how the PA and the speakers are interacting with the walls, uh, the seats or pews, whatever you've got, the, the floors, all of that stuff plays into how your mix sounds in the room. We're going to artificially add that by using reverb uh, to start out with. I'm going to do two reverbs in the next video. One is going to be for the band. One's going to be for the vocals. And if you look up here on the right-hand side, we will use this mix verb uh, for that for that purpose. So thanks for watching this video. Hopefully this was helpful and you got a little bit out of further refining the, the vocals and listening to it as not soloed instruments, but in the overall mix. And we will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.